Hello once again everybody and welcome back to Faros's journey through Drang Lake. It's just about the end of the game. We have a few bosses around the place that need to be taken out before we can claim true victory over Drang Lake as a whole, but it's going to be very quick going this last episode. It shouldn't actually take much more than this. There's the optional boss here in the Luna Belfry. There's the Luna Sol that I'm going to have to make my way through. And then there's also the Undead Purgatory. And from there, it's pretty much just a straight on, th straight shot right on through to beating, what's his face? The Throne Defender and Watcher, as well as the final boss, Nishandra herself. Unfortunately, the DLC Ivory Crown shenanigans took place and the DLC actually got delayed slightly so we're probably not gonna be facing that area on this character at least not just yet uh, the intention is for once it's released to take a first blind run of it through with Faram just jump back to him real quick and then get a bit more of an in-depth uh, run through with Pharos here once I've actually played through it several times on different characters and really gotten a feel for what's going on with the DLC. That's how I took on the uh, Iron King DLC and I'd like to keep that same format if at all possible. Right now it's just a matter of cleaning up these last few loose ends throughout the game and that's gonna be it for this run. Though, there are going to be two more episodes, or at least two extra things after this. Those being, of course, the Ivory Crown DLC once it's finally released, as well as I want to be sure to get another set of Rat Covenant PvP videos. Not videos, but uh, matches. And so for that, I'm actually planning on taking the game into New Game Plus in order to get a larger variety of combatants because if I have a good impression of the community it would seem that the Rat Bro Covenant is kind of dead once you reach end game of just New Game Plus. Not New Game Plus but just the first new game so I do want to be hosting a few more matches with that try out the higher diversity of the final build see how that does for me and yeah that's the plan for Faros here Right now it's just a matter of cutting my way through these bosses that I'm completely overleveled for. I'm not gonna lie. Feels kinda good. Just quickly dodge out of the way, get your punish off. However, you really don't want to leave anybody on half health because they summon a second gargoyle every time you get one to half health, so if you start just leaving some half dead then quickly you're going to rake up a ton of these gargoyles on your keister. Luckily, I have the ability to kill them in one full combo if I manage to land all four hits. Sadly, they usually interrupt with attacks of their own, but sometimes you can get a moment like this where they're busy, lock themselves up, and just let you wail on their side for a goodly while. Take all that to the bank, and head on over here. Up on down, there's going to be a chest right here, and in New Game Pluses, there's actually a pair of dogs to kind of punish anyone who's uh, speeding through it without really paying attention to what they're doing. I am going to grab the Bastille key down there from Vorgel the Sinner and all them, but it's not too terribly important. The only reason I would imagine myself using it this uh, playthrough would be if I wanted to grab Flame Weapon and Ascetic the uh, Lost Sinner fight. Because aside from that, it's really not going to come in handy. Come on, Vorgel. Nope. Better luck next time. If there is a next time, which there won't be because I'm going to shut you down the moment you stand up. Wonderful. Last little doggy up here guarding an enchanted falcon. It's a nice little reference to Dark Souls 1. What it's doing here, mm, who knows, but hey, 
They gave you an enchanted falcon in Dark Souls 1, so they give you an enchanted one here in Dark Souls 2. I haven't honestly found out any good uses for the enchanted uh, upgrade path. I think the only upgrade path it's actually worthwhile for is the blue moon, great, not blue moon, but um, the great moon, great sword, whatever the magic great sword you get from Seath soul is because I believe that using enchanted actually turns it all physical though I could be completely off base there it's just something I've heard I've never tried it just because I think there are better physical weapons and I never build pure caster so let's get that out of the way and now time to take on the huntsman's cops optional boss of the uh, Executioner Chariot. Vati just released his video explaining some of the uh, translational errors, translational mm, little extra bits that they kind of changed, and apparently it is supposed to be the Executioner Chariot, not the Executioner's Chariot, which is a bit of a big difference. Showing you that it's actually the chariot itself that's the big bad of the area, and that the driver is kind of ancillary in the whole matter. He helps, but he's not the focus by any means. You can see this weapon is just leagues above what's really necessary for this area. If I can get a backstab, it's an immediate one-shot, and it's got a really fast moveset with nice stunlock capacity and great reach, so... I'm pretty much in ideal position to be. Uh, let's let's try that again. An ideal position to be taking this area on, just because I am so late game and I'm really over leveled. And because I'm over leveled and stuff, I'm cocky, of course, and so I'm gonna not take this area on the smart way and aggro them one at a time. Soon enough, I'm probably gonna pay for that, but no, it would seem I do not pay for that, and I get to just march right on through. These guys all have a nice chance to drop cracked red eye orbs. And quite honestly, they're one of the only enemies that can consistently drop them. The piglets outside of the Majula Mansion have a chance technically, but it's a very low chance. So you might want want to rely on that if you have any options on the matter. Nope. Have fun meeting my greatsword. As I and we'll want to say, mine is bigger. I just wanted to make that really quick with the really strong critical there. That's the Sublime Bone Dust for the playthrough. Once I get back to Majula, I can finally get my Estus to fully upgraded status, and that's pretty wonderful. Come right on in. That whole cutscene, it plays every time, so it's no big deal. Really. Would have expected that to be a one shot, but I suppose it's no big deal. Oh, mistimed the roll. But it does make it a one shot now. <clears throat> Never underestimate these guys. They may not be very strong, but they have the numbers, and they have a very nice chance to stagger you, so. They do actually pose a threat, if only because they can swarm you and slow you down for the actual chariot to finish you off. Luckily, I have enough adaptability to be able to very consistently roll through that. On lower adaptability characters, you really have to have precise timing. I do not. I get to just roll in its general direction and call it a day. And now these guys... Oh, bollocks. Come on, Chariot. Thank you for taking care of them for me. Much obliged. Much obliged. Oh, really? Fine, then. You just bugger off. I'll deal with you later. Ooh. Thought I had the time for that. Apparently, it was not so. So I miss out on getting the bunch of damage on them while they stand up. Sometimes they get locked into that in the weirdest way. Like doing full 360 spins in order to kick you. It's very strange. But my weapon is massive, 
and they take damage like it's nobody's business. So, let's just hack on through. There you have it. That's the optional boss out of the way. The last place to go is the Belfry Saw. Run on through and grab all the stuff there, specifically the Black Knight Greatsword, and I believe I have the Titan Knight for that. I do indeed. So, let's pick that up. Oh, excuse me. Pick that up, take it over to Majula, upgrade it, slap on an extra level or so, and then it's on to the throne duo and Nishandra waiting over in Drang Lake Castle. I do have the bonfire all nice and ready for myself. Never had to head this way before, but let's see what we get. We even have a slight chance that we'll get some PvP over in here, so let's have a look-see. Right now I am plugged directly into the router just because I know there's a chance I might be entering into some PvP, so it wouldn't actually be that bad if I med upon anybody. Oh, that was a muck-up. There we go. And this guy as well. I'm not too terribly worried because I've got uh, plenty of Estus, so there's not a whole lot this area has to, that it could really throw up my way to mess me up. So I can just be very relaxed while... Oh, you know what? Let's try it. Okay, let's try it again. There we go. Yes! <laughs> I don't think it's as impressive if you're parry swapping in PvE, but uh, <laughs> I certainly entertained myself with it, so... It's definitely worthwhile. <laughs> First time I've ever actually parry swapped. Never considered doing it before, but I was like, you know, I can probably get a one shot if I use my great sword. And I know that I can get a pretty consistent parry here, so let's try for it. And it paid off after I uh, was a little bit too distracted to get the first two parries. Avalons. Not gonna do you any good, buddy. Because my attacks come out as fast as a one handed axe, have the range of a great axe, and the damage that's somewhere in between. Okay, let's try it again. Bait him on up and we can go over that once more. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna bother with them. I can take them out in melee. I don't think I have the speed with the bow to. Pull that. Oh, he's two-handing it, which means I can't try that out. That's sad. But he still dies. Oh, I didn't even need to parry swap. I get. Well, maybe I probably did. Orma's great shield. Fancy that. I was gonna say that I didn't need to parry swap because uh, the backstab with this weapon killed. But because this weapon only has two ticks of damage on the parry, but three ticks of damage on the backstab, it probably wouldn't have done the job completely. So, it is it is definitely good that I parry swapped. Immolation, one of the most useless spells in the game. It's slightly more utilitarian now that they've buffed it slightly, but anyone who's saying that it's viable is still pulling your leg. It makes a nice joke spell now, whereas before it made a nice suicide spell. Grab the Black Knight Greatsword and the Protective Chime. The Protective Chime forms a nice quality chime, and by that I mean it's pretty good for casting both hexes and miracles, whereas a lot of hexes specialize in one or the other. Not to mention also has really nice cast speed. It has the original 140 of the regular Cleric's Chime, so it's almost a direct upgrade, except that it doesn't scale quite as hard, but it's got much better base damages. All in all, a pretty great weapon all round. Get that all the way to plus five and take it away with me. Let's talk to good old Emerald Herald. What do I need? What do I need? I need about 
19 more levels at this point. Do I have any catalysts that I can actually use? I know I upgraded the Sanctum Shield. I have the Sunset Staff, which means that if I have a Dark Spell... Oh, <laughs> that is something I'm going to have to do before endgame, is go around and pick up a lot of the spells that I may have passed over. As it stands, I don't actually have enough for any of the regular hexes that I would attune. So, let's see. You know, honestly, repair would probably be the most utilitarian. I suppose chameleon would also be good, but that's strictly for PvP. Let's get crystal magic we Oh, not crystal magic. Great magic weapon. Yeah, that sounds like the best idea. That'll be the most useful in this last little PvE clear. King's Gate. Oh, I didn't do the Pilgrims of the Dark Covenant. But at the same time, I don't really want to. I want to stick as just a rat bro. Rat bros for life, you know what I'm saying. And so, switching around to become a uh, Pilgrim of the Dark doesn't really appeal to me. I want to play out the cosplay completely. Oh wait, no, let's keep that equipped just long enough to cast my great magic weapon before the fight, and then we can ditch it. Shanalot here. La da da. Yeah. I don't even get why she peels back her hood. Doesn't really seem to change much. It's just kind of silly. But anyways, Shanalot here. Definitely a manifestation, an illusion almost, a copy, a false second. Uh, that is made a whole lot more clear in the Japanese version of the text, but I'm pretty sure most people already assumed as much given her other dialogues. It is even questionable as to whether or not the version of her that's found within the Dragon Eerie is the correct version, the original but uh, who can say? I don't need, know the actual implications of the Japanese text, only the interpretation I was given, and I don't know if it necessarily supports the conclusion that she is the original. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You came too late. You're going to have to invade a little bit earlier than that if you want to take me on. It is strange, though, that he actually... Uh, spawns right down there. I would have assumed that they would spawn behind you. This little kite fest. It's so difficult to lure them out because you have to get one on their own in order to do anything realistic and they're always turtling up behind their shields as well. Oh, come on! Humbug. There we go. Get a nice pair of swings off. Ugh. That's the most annoying, is when one of them forces you to roll into the other's swing. They kind of set each other up. I don't know if their AI is actually designed for that, but it happens quite a lot, and it's really frustrating. Oh my gosh. was not reading my inputs to roll. It's one of those weird times when you're queuing up rolls, and it just kind of fails to read them. It happens sometimes in PvP as well, like oftentimes you'll manage to get slightly more than your standard two-hit combo. Generally speaking, that's because the opponent was trying to roll, and the game kind of failed to read that properly and queue up their rolls. I don't think it's actually a problem with the, um, whatchamacallit, the stagger system. I think it's just a problem with how the game stacks actions. Oh, bollocks. There we go. At this point, I want to switch my focus to her, because Throne Defender is about to get into his buff range, at which point he'll back off for a moment to buff, and I can finish off this Throne Watcher. He looks like he's about to buff, or he's just coming in with his sword. I don't know quite what he's doing. But this is my time to strike. Yeah. 
And I was perfect with the timing there. Just as I take the time to get the kill shot off, Throne Defender decides, hey, maybe I should buff. He chose poorly. And for that, he dies. That's these two taken care of. The Chandra will be on her way shortly. I want to tag on this hollow skin because I don't want to deal with her toxicity of the corruption, the curse. Managed to equip my... Oh, did I not manage to equip it? Oh, I equipped it to the wrong hand. Okay, looks like we're not doing it this time. I can go in without the magic. You still have to destroy those because they do constantly drain your health while you're kneel while you're kneel by <laughs> while you're nearby. Yeah, I don't know why that was a tongue twister, but I was not gonna say that properly. Get my free swings off. Back it up. Oh, looked like she was only going for the two hit combo, yet she staggered out that last little hit just long enough to mess with me. Naughty, naughty. Oh, how did that not hit? That looks like it at least has some backswing. Yeah, can't fool me. Twice. There we go. Save up some stamina to get the heck away from this. Can I poison the Chandra? That's an interesting question. I don't know the answer. Hmm. I'll check in just a smidge. If she doesn't laser me, then I can just keep plinking away at her. That's six poison arrows. Seven? Usually this is about the time when someone would be getting poisoned, so it's looking unlikely. Yes, you can poison her. It just takes for friggin' ever. She apparently has really high poison resist. Which makes a lot of sense considering her makeup. Oh, did not want to trade blows there. Let's back it up and heal on up. Because she is about to go down. Oh. Once again, I'm trading blows poorly. She's gonna pop. And I'm gonna kill her. There we go. Surprised that last hit missed me. But, uh. Yeah, there you have it. That is Faros's complete run of. At least as much of the game as is actually released at this point. Thank you so much for watching, and now this last little cutscene. I'll cut the feed once I get to actually watch Faro sitting on the throne, but I definitely want to actually seat the throne in all my glory. The golems all sitting up and Recognizing your giant's kinship, forming up into the center here. If it actually gives you a more downward shot, you can see that the darkness that they are standing in is the same roiling darkness as the abyss. This is not just your ordinary darkness, this is advanced darkness. And it is ro risen up right underneath Drang Lake Castle. I don't care about the subtitles, I care about the throne. Those stone doors mean so much to me just because of their attachment to Dark Souls 1 and one of my big overarching conspiracy theories about the Kiln, Lost Isolith, and Solaire. It's a bit of a stretch, but it really, really combines a whole lot of different lore aspects and it's one of those ones that makes you proud just because you thought of it. But yeah, this is the throne. <laughs> that Faro's face. It's great. I almost wish I'd have uh, taken off the poison arrows because the green kind of messes with it. There we go. What lies ahead? And there we have it. God. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in my next Let's Play.